Oh baby, it's a good day. You're not expecting parts to show up and then these guys show up. Well, welcome back DIY car guys and car girls. And today we're gonna put in some QA1 double adjustables up front. And the main reason why I'm doing this is if you saw, I went to the track and when I watched the video, I'm starting to learn just a little bit about suspension. Slowly getting there, have a lot to learn, but I'm starting to understand it. Now, when your vehicle comes up like this really fast, it may look violent, it may look like it's cutting a good 60, but according to the 60 foot on the slip, it didn't cut a good 60. So I say the easiest way, if you're just thinking about traction for the first time, think about it like this and cutting 60 foots. What's the best way to go forward? Well, that's by lunging forward, right? So if you're hopping, up and then going forward the person who is lunging forward is going to be quicker off the 60 or quicker out the hole than someone who's jumping up and then coming down my truck is jumping up and coming down so i need to go out and yes i know my little jump is probably a little over dramatic but you get the idea so let's get up on these shocks okay so if you're wondering what i got here what i'm doing is kind of get it set up uh, okay, first you gotta have a, a man drink and you gotta record your settings. So what I did was this. So basically I have on the, um, the rebound, I got five. On the compression, I have eight. I went off of this to the way it was uh, working best with the settings on this. Kind of did it by feel, let me show you. It's just a guesstimate, but I think it's the best way to set this up in the beginning if you have something that works with your regular old shocks right here. All right, so basically I'm just doing this by feel guys. Um, I know it's coming up too fast, so I'm gonna push it all the way in. It's harder to push in the pull out. This is the stiffest one I can get this guy in. So coming up, watch this. Pretty darn quick, right? I'm gonna push it in <clears throat> as hard as I can. I'm gonna do the same thing to this guy. QA1, I'm gonna pull it up. Yeah, buddy, that's way harder. I'm gonna push it in. It's about the same. So I want to come up slower, but I want to come down about the same speed. I think that was working. Just a guesstimate, but that's what I'm doing. So if you're wondering why I have this guy right here like that, the reason why is because of this. I know when this shock is fully extended with the extra travel, if you put this right around there where it's going to be, where that one is, I want them both to be about in the same spot right see this guy right here and this guy right here so that way when this goes up when it has a full travel of the front ends I have an extra inch that i don't like you know bottom it out on the components so that's the plan all right guys so uh installing the shock was a little more tricky than i thought it was going to be uh first of all it comes with bolts so you have to put a uh the impact gun on one side and up here you can get a rack uh, open and wrench on the two top ends so you put the bolt going down that way and also put a washer underneath that guy to uh give it a little more clamping area so it's in there it's definitely a, a little tricky but you can do it and also right here on the edges it was easy to open it right there on both ends and of course the top is pretty much standard like any other shock you just tighten that down to get a good amount of squish on that bushing and you're good to go at least hopefully all right so now i'm about to put in the passenger side and there's definitely a difference from what i was feeling from the other one to that one because i was using that same shock as a baseline so on the compression was seven and the other one it was eight definitely eight on this one felt way tighter than eight on the passenger side so sorry driver side so on the passenger side we went seven but the rebound felt pretty much exactly the same like i said that's just me guesstimating we'll see how it works out okay so here's my install tip now that i've done one make sure your angle's the same as the one you pull off on these little feet right here right make sure before you shove it in there you have the proper bushing and spacing you want on this side get it up in there and make sure you just have a bolt just to hold it in make sure your knobs go all the way through and then now down to the bottom it's gonna be really hard to push that 
last bit through there by hand. So take your jack and just push it up. Yeah, you can probably make it easy to push up in there, but I want to make sure I have my settings on the correct knobs. So I know I'm at least starting at the same point on each side. And then stick your bolts through there, tighten it down. Also, make sure you're using a hardened washer if we're going to put that on the other end of the shock. The sun may be getting low, but we got to take it for a rip, right? Remember, guys, I'm still running the uh, Hope You Hook Nittos. I'm not going to put my good tires on, tear them up on the street, just testing out. The hope is, or the guess is, if these hook better than they've been hooking with suspension mods, then I'm heading in the right direction. I like to first start off making a hit on this back road. It probably has one of the worst surfaces known to mankind. It annihilates tires. Uh, just very like pebbly-ish and it's, it's bad. Just trust me, it's not a great surface. I always like to see if I can at least get a good hookup in second gear. When I hit it, I had to pedal it, but they kind of drove through it just fine. Check it out. And I know these rolling hits aren't like the perfect test for this. You, you want to put on some good tires, put some traction compound down, do a burnout and see how it works on an actual road from a dig. But this is all I got right now. This next section is probably one of the better surfaces. I did pick up a little bit of dust uh, getting there, but I wanted to see how I would take it from a little roll from second gear, for, sorry, from first to second gear, a little bit to third. I didn't have to pedal it, but you know, it wasn't that bad. I was pretty happy with it. Okay, so for uh, initial settings, just kind of ballparking it, I can definitely feel the difference. Uh, I noticed after I zeroed everything out, if you saw that one clip where I just stayed in it, I wanted to see what the um, ass would do, and that thing just went, this whole truck just went straight, which is w what I wanted. I didn't want it to start pulling this way or that way, so at least I know um, the, the cow tracks, the slider links, the, the load is, uh, is good. Not only that, but it feels like the whole thing just handles better with the stiffer suspension up front. Uh, it's coming up slower and it's going down slower. At least that's what I think. We'll have to get it to the track to really find out, but so far it feels pretty good. And uh, I'm definitely a, a mod. If you're thinking about getting double adjustables, go ahead and get it because this is just a stab in the dark and it already feels better. So next time guys, I'm gonna get some E85 because we're running out of um, Cam 2. I'm not gonna buy any more. Once all this Cam 2 is out, we're going to E85, get the carburetor mods, go back out, see what we can do. Keep on wrenching, guys. Peace.